Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I am Dr. Cade, the founder and owner of Rooted Apothecary, and I am with Haley Fugel. Thank you for coming back, Haley. Today, we're going to have some more fun and continue on with our roller series, and we're going to talk about the goddess roller today. So I know that you've been very excited about this. We've been uh, anticipating and planning all the things that we're going to talk about in this one. Um, so why don't we first start with some symptoms that could indicate uh, that hormones might be... Um, going awry. Where do you want to start with that one? What's yeah. people? So there's quite a few. So just to start, um, some of these symptoms are common. That doesn't mean that they're normal for you to have. So things like painful periods, things like PMS, tender breasts, intense cramping, heavy bleeding, and then getting into things like endometriosis, PCOS, and amenorrhea. All of these things, although may be common, aren't normal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one of the things that we were kind of talking about this is, you know, cancer is really bad, right? Cancer, I mean, we all know somebody who's been affected by cancer. It's so bad. I think the last statistics were one out of three women get it and one out of every two men get it. It's, it's crazy how bad it is nowadays. And we know that that's not normal. You're right. It's super common, but it's not normal. And same thing with these list of symptoms. And we know that there's more, but there's, you know, a good list that you started off with there. So if you're experiencing any of those things, most of us are going to reach to try to treat the symptoms, right? We're going to try to use a hot pack or we're going to try to get on some medication or we're going to do some sort of, um, you know, usually again, medication, synthetic solution. But mm -hmm. what we always recommend is trying to find the root cause. And the root cause can be from a lot of different things, which we'll jump into today. Um, and well, maybe we should just start there. So one of the tests that we talk about for hormonal imbalance is called a Dutch test. And so um, recommend that you go onto their website, Dutch test, and it's a, it's a self-collection. So anybody who gets the test can go home. It's a dried urine test. And um, so what that will do is not just see where things like, um, you know, estrogen is, progesterone, testosterone. It's going to go a couple layers deeper and see what the building blocks of those hormones are. So yeah, so we say estrogen might be high, right? But why is that? What part of the building blocks are contributing to that, right? Um, or uh, progesterone is low. Why is that? Do we have a mineral or um, a micronutrient deficiency? This test is going to allow us to see that. Um, what's really cool is Dutch also has a couple other things. This one here is the Dutch Plus. So this is a cortisol awakening um, so that we can see throughout the day what people's cortisol levels are. They also have a 30-day cycle mapping test. Um, it's, a, it's awesome. We can also see, um, again, uh, corticosteroids, or I'm sorry, um, where people's adrenal um, health is, both short-term and long-term um, stress. So it's such an accurate test and it's so simple. So that's a good one for hormones, hormonal health. Um, other things that can contribute, of course, are micronutrient deficiencies. So you heard me mention that. So if we aren't getting enough of the nutrients into our system through our food, or if we have an underlying gut issue and aren't absorbing those things properly, a micronutrient test will tell us exactly what are we missing? And also on the flip side, are we toxic and too high on any of those things? Mm -hmm. And then last one that we jumped into Haley, as we were talking about this as another test to see what could be contributing to hormonal imbalances would be toxicity issues. And mm -hmm. so um, what areas um, could cause toxicity issues, Haley? So there's a lot of different hormone disruptors that um, people see in their daily life that you wanna make changes in. So things like parabens that are in your makeup and in shampoos um, and flaylates that are in plastics, those are hormone disruptors. So if you have a lot of those things around your house that you're using daily, especially like the products on your body, um, those things can go and disrupt your hormone function. So one of the things that we recommend for people to check all their products on is the EWG website. Um, it's the Skin Deep, um, website. They have a ton of different products. You can search what you use in your home and it'll tell you uh, what the ingredients are and it uses uh, a different rating system. So you can see if you have a good rated product, which is going to be low in any of those things or one that's worse that you may want to swap out. It's such a cool website. So EWG stands for the Environmental Working Group, and they've got a lot of great information there from, again, cleaning products to things that we're putting on our skin, toothpaste, you know, hair products, deodorants, uh, makeup, like you said. And what's great is you, it's a huge database and it's ever growing, but so are all mm -hmm. of the consumer products. So if they don't have the product that you're looking for when you're searching for it, you can actually turn your product around and you can search by ingredient. And it'll even mm -hmm. rate the ingredients and what type of side effects that it might be there. So whether it's like cancer or immunotoxicity, or skin sensitivities, 
Mm -hmm. get a rating from zero to 10, from mild to severe, as far as, you know, again, how you should be avoiding those things. And so if you don't even know where to start as far as trying to find healthy products, what's great too is they'll give us um, uh, kind of like a list and an order function when you're searching the EWG. So you can go under, say, sunscreen, and you can rank from the cleanest to the dirtiest if you just want to go find the best and lowest recommended mm -hmm. products, which is really, really cool. So again, environmental working group and that um, aspect of the EWG is called the Skin Deep Database. Wonderful resource. We love that. Um, so other tests that you can do, though, besides just, again, looking through your products, again, is toxicity testing. So whether that's mm -hmm. mold or, like Haley said, the endocrine disruptors, um, it's just such a huge problem these days. That's creating massive amounts of problems, especially in hormonal health. So we went through symptoms. We just went through tests. How about tracking, Haley? What are some ways that you can um, track um, your cycle at home? Yeah, so cycle tracking is super neat. It's something that I um, learned about, I think maybe three years ago. And I have something called the Lady Comp. This is the older version of what is now called the Daisy. So this was this is basically a temperature um, machine. So it's a basal temperature machi machine. So in the morning, very first thing, um, when your alarm goes off, before you get up in the morning, you take your temperature, you just sit it under your tongue, wait for it to beep, and then it tracks your temperature throughout your cycle. So it's super cool because it tells you your infertile days, your fertile days, you know when you ovulate. And then with all of this information, you can start to look at some of those symptoms that you're having and determine maybe where they're coming from based on where you are in your cycle. So and another great product is the Ava product, which I think, Kate, you might have a little more information on. So the Ava product is kind of like an aura ring. It's a wearable band and it's going to connect to your phone and it's just going to monitor your temperature just like what Haley was saying so that you know where you are in your cycle and whether we're using this just to gain information about our cycle and map it if we're trying to avoid getting pregnant, if we're trying to actually get pregnant, there's a lot mm -hmm. of data there that's available for us um, and those things are so simple. The temperature is very, very accurate. It's not perfect, mm -hmm. not perfect, right? But it's very, very accurate and I think um, what we always recommend to people is the more that you can track, the more data you can get, the more you can anticipate and understand mm -hmm. how your body's responding. And then when you do put in those changes, you can actually monitor those changes and you can see what's exactly. working and what isn't working. So you said that the lady comp is now called the Daisy. And then the other one yes. was Ava. Is that AVA? Mm -hmm. I think is what it is, right? Yep. It's yep. Just the Ava, AVA. And then I'll link all of this stuff again, like I have been in the description um, for all these different things that we talked about today. Okay. So symptoms, tests, and tracking. Where are we going next? Should we talk about some simple things people can do at home? Maybe yes. jump into food and I think one of our collective favorites is seed cycling. Why don't we talk about seed cycling first? Okay, so seed cycling is super cool. Um, I definitely recommend starting this if you are also tracking your cycle um, because you do need to know where you are in your cycle to start doing the seed cycling. Um, but essentially what you do is you take in your follicular, follicular cycle, which is the first phase of your cycle, um, you do one tablespoon of pumpkin seeds and one tablespoon of flax seeds um, every single day for that whole phase. So, so typically in a normal, I shouldn't even say normal, but a typical cycle, it's day one to 14. This fluctuates for everyone, which you'll be able to uh, determine for yourself if you track. And then for the second phase, the luteal phase of your cycle, um, you do one tablespoon of sesame seeds and one tablespoon of sunflower seeds every single day. So it's super easy. Um, and basically what that does is it gives you the boost that you need in whatever hormone during that cycle or that phase of your cycle. So during the first phase, you're getting an estrogen boost. And then in your second phase, you're getting a progesterone boost. It's such a cool thing. Um, very, very safe for people to do, especially mm -hmm. tracking, right? And we're just getting these things from food. Nuts and seeds are a great source of fat. Um, and if you have sensitivities to those types of things, you can always soak them, make sure that you're buying them raw and organic. Um, but again, if you have a sensitivity, we'll talk about some other things that you can do. Um, but I love it. Now, you said that you've been doing this for a little while. Are you just eating those, needs, uh, those nuts and seeds right out of your hand? Are you putting them in a smoothie or a salad? Or how are you doing it? So I personally, just to make sure that I'm doing it every single day, I just do it right in my hand and, and, um, and eat it that way. Um, the flax, I do buy ground flax. Um, of course, you could always just buy flax seeds and grind them yourself. Then you could put that in a smoothie. You could put that in you know, your breakfast or whatever you're eating in the morning. Um, but you do want to do ground flax because of the lignans in it. So it's just how it um, helps the hormones in your body. So um, flax, you do want to get ground. But the rest, you can just pour it in your hand and go. 
Awesome. I know that flaxseed oxidizes real quick too. So make sure that you're getting a good source and you're mm -hmm. going through it pretty quick and protecting it from um, exposure to air. Um, okay. So I like it. So um, where I first heard about seed cycling was a great book called Cooking for Hormones and Balance. Um, and this woman, Magdalena, has a really, really cool website, um, great email list. Um, she puts out a ton of really cool content. And again, that was where I was first introduced to seed cycling. I don't know how many years ago, but uh, pretty fantastic. And um, I I think there's, if you've got a really big problem and you know, with your hormones, I don't know how far seed cycling is going to get you. Mm -hmm. uh, but the cool part is if you ha are happy with your cycle, um, <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> if you're happy with your cycle, this isn't going to hurt, right? It's safe. Right. For everyone. Would you agree, Haley? Yeah, a hundred percent. So, um, like we said earlier, super safe. Um, you can easily incorporate it. These are things you can buy at your, you know, Whole Foods or wherever you shop. Um, yeah, it's super e easy to incorporate. Very cool. Well, let's talk a little bit more about food then beyond just doing the seed cycling. Um, how, what are some really great nutrients that people should be making sure that are in their diets, Haley? Yeah, so it's super important to have um, healthy fats in your diet. We know this, um, fats are really important in hormones and hormone regulation. So getting that from nuts, from seeds, um, if you're doing it from more of a plant-based diet and you're getting your fats through um, plant-based options, you're gonna wanna have it be a little bit higher than what you would be getting from a meat source. Um, and again, for any of these products or any of these food items, you wanna have high quality. So organic, if you're doing meats, it's gonna be the grass-fed, grass-finished, um, free range, all of that is what you wanna look for in these food sources. Um, slow digested carbs are really important as well. So getting your fruits and your veggies in iron is really important too. So eating lots of spinach, tomatoes, beets, pumpkin. Um, and then we can even go into making sure that you are incorporating probiotics as well. Love it. Lots of great probiotics out there. Do you have any favorite probiotic foods that people should have in their diets on a regular basis? I personally really enjoy eating sauerkraut. So I put that in and incorporate that in my meals. Um, I also like kimchi, which is very similar, just has more flavor. Um, but there's tons of options out there if you want to get a food-based probiotic. Um, yeah. Awesome. What do you think? And, and yeah, I think that's great too. Cycling it through, getting different flavors. There's lots of great recipes where you can make your own sauerkraut at home too, and that mm -hmm. might be better than store-bought. Um, but if you don't like those foods, or maybe it's causing some gastric distress when you do it, um, in a past video, we've talked a little bit about tummy stuff. And so mm -hmm. things like digestive enzymes or getting a probiotic off the shelf instead of from food is a good idea. And ones that we talked about like in the past were Seed, the brand mm -hmm. Seed, um, which will ship straight to your door, a brand called Terraflora, and then another brand called um, Microbiome Labs uh, Restore Flora. So there's lots of great probiotics out there um, and just see what fits best for you. But it is an integral part in making sure that whatever good food you are getting in, your body's able to digest it properly, absorb it properly, and send it to the right areas. So I do want to just reiterate what Haley said. Um, um, your body, our bodies are um, inefficient at metabolizing plant fat. We're much, we're much better at um, metabolizing animal fat. That animal has already done all of the hard work for mm -hmm. us and our bed is able to use that quicker for neurologic health and of course, hormonal health. Um, so that's awesome. So we talked about nuts and seeds. Um, and then I think we should maybe talk a little bit about avocados, coconut are both mm -hmm. really good sources of, of, of plant fat as well. Um, so make sure that we're doing those things the right way. Same thing with the animal products. So um, what else What else for food? How about things that we should avoid? Um, oxidized fats are a really big one. Those are going to come from um, processed foods. Um, so if you're a, maybe what we can do is post up the junk food for healthy people on this one, Haley. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that I love chips. I love junk food um, <laughs> just as much as everybody else does. But there's definitely bad options that are out there. And then we can make a healthier decision for that. And so there's a couple brands out there um, for chips specifically that don't use the oxidized bad fats like sunflower or safflower or canola or corn oil. And my favorite is Siete. Siete makes a mm -hmm. heck of a tortilla chip. They are addicting. Yeah. Those big bags turn into little tiny snack bags real fast. Don't they? <laughs> um, but man, they sure do. Good, good, good. They're awesome. Oh, they are so good. Um, how about um, any other types of foods besides the oxidized fats that people should be avoiding? Um, I would avoid anything that's you know, a processed sugar. So a processed, um, you know, aside from like a, a salty savory snack, like a chip, um, staying away from processed sugars and just high sugar in general is going to be really helpful in 
a lot of these symptoms going down. So a lot of the times when you are getting near your cycle, you start to gravitate towards those um, cravings. And a lot of times they're sugar-based, they're carb-based. And while you do want to have the healthy carbohydrates, you want to stay away from some of those um, not as great options um, because those are going to intensify some of those symptoms that you're, you may be having. It's interesting how that works, isn't it? Right? Um, it really is. And it, it definitely feeds a downward spiral feedback loop, right? Where mm -hmm. we get a little bit crankier and we crave those things a little bit more, our stress goes up, our adrenal health goes down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty rough, but uh, sugar definitely breeds, and along with oxidized fats, breeds inflammation. And uh, all the way down at the cellular level, which is not good, especially if we're trying to build up from that level here with our hormonal health. Um, but uh, some good healthy sugars that people can um, swap out would be things like raw local honey is a really good one. Mm -hmm. Coconut palm sugar is great. And as long as you're doing it in moderation, a good source of stevia um, is, a, a, is another option as well. So um, what's great is 2020, 2021 here, we've got lots of wonderful options. When we started talking mm -hmm. about these things and learning for ourselves, Haley, um, five, six, 10 years ago, there was less options. So we've learned a lot since then, and there's a lot more available on the market, which is great. Um, other things, uh, why don't we finish up and talk a little bit about the roller that we have that's formulated, um, and then I think maybe some more resources and supplements that people can do. So we talked about good fats. If you can't get that through your diet, make sure that you're supplementing with a quality fish oil. We love that. I mm -hmm. think that's a great thing. Um, other things are making sure that your um, magnesium levels, your vitamin D levels, your vitamin K levels are on point, and you mm -hmm. can do that through a micronutrient test or just start putting into your diet. Um, Another one that I love uh, is uh, Dr. Kelly Brogan. I think she's a wonderful source of information. Um, her story is pretty incredible, absolutely incredible. And her husband is the founder of the website Green Med Info. So uh, if you got a couple minutes and want to dig deeper and get some great uh, truth into your heart, I think these two sources, Green Med Info and Dr. Kelly Brogan is a great place to start. Um, and then lastly, why don't we talk a little bit about our goddess roller. So inside our goddess roller, of course, we've got 50 milligrams of CBD, but a Along with that, we've got rose oil, we've got clary sage, and we've got geranium. And we've specifically picked out those oils to support you through your hormonal health journey. And um, areas to place that are on the inner thigh, on the inside of the hip, on the lower abdomen, and on the low back, and rotate that through. And again, the CBD and the terpenes that are in there, along with the organic essential oils that we put together, are amazing, amazing support. Now, Haley, we've got a sale, I think, on the rollers still, correct? Yes. Yep. What so currently it? our entire collection of rollers are 50% off and it's already applied on the site. So you don't have to use any special code. You just go in, look through what you want, add to your cart and you're good to go. Very, very cool. We do our best to make it easy on everybody. Um, so if you've got any questions about things we talked about today, um, just make sure that you put it in the comments below and we'll do our best to reach back to you. Of course, we've got a great team of doctors on our medical advisory board. And um, I think Dr. Jockers and Dr. Crick are both incredibly talented at getting to the root of hormonal issues. And they've got a couple great articles on their website too. So please go check out those docs, which we'll link to below. And Haley, do we have anything else that we want to share? Anything we missed? I think we covered everything. Cool. I think we did too. I was excited about that one as I know you were too. So um, girls go out there and run with it. Um, I think there was a, we really missed talking about um, men in this one. And so <laughs> men, if you are struggling with hormonal health, moodiness, lack of uh, energy, just fatigue, mental, emotionally, just drained and exhausted, um, the Dutch test is for us as well. We have testosterone in our body as well as progesterone and estrogen. Granted, they're in different levels uh, than women, but it's important that our hormonal health is in this um, optimal range as well, not just for how we feel, but how we function short-term and long-term. So the Dutch test is a great thing, and you can go onto their website to take a peek a little bit more to see if it's the right fit for you. Um, but awesome. I'm glad that we did this today, Haley. That was great. And Me hopefully too. everybody gets a chance to try the goddess roller and give us your feedback and let us know what questions you have. Are we good? We're good. Hi, everybody. We will see you next time. I think we're going to be talking about the peace roller next time. Awesome. Cool. Cool, cool. Good with that? I am good. I like it.